So the placebo effect does have an evil twin, and it's called the nocebo effect, which is what I wanted to talk to you about. So the nocebo effect comes from the Latin, meaning I will harm, and it's the opposite of the placebo. It's the power of the mind to make you feel worse, to make you ill. And you might be sitting there thinking, okay, that's quite a good story, it's quite Halloween-y, but it's not going to affect me. Well, let me tell you a story that's a bit more close to home. This time, it's the sad story of a guy called Sam Schumann. And this story is set in the 1970s. It's a true story. Now, Sam Schumann lived in America. And one day, he was told by a doctor that he had three months to live, that he was dying from terminal cancer. Uh, this is not a horse chestnut. I have been reliably informed. This is actually a cultured cancer cell, just so that you know. So he was told he had three months to live. And three months later, he died, almost to the day. But when they cut him open and did an autopsy, they couldn't find any cancer. So they expected his body to be riddled. But all they could find was a one-centimeter tumor that was barely enough to cause symptoms, let alone to have killed him. And I interviewed the guy who treated Sam Schumann, and he told me he didn't die of cancer, but from believing he had cancer. Now, that's suddenly a lot more real. Now, that story couldn't happen today, I can reassure you, because we have all this amazing imaging technology and these biomolecular tests. So that story cannot happen today. But I would argue that witch doctors are still around us. They're still here. In the southern states of America, 80 years ago, they may have wafted strange bottles of liquid around and hung around in graveyards. But I would argue that today's witch doctor wears a white coat and carries a stethoscope. What your doctor tells you can influence your health for the better or for the worse. And nocebo is when it happens for the worse. Now, I think nocebo is kind of on a bit of a spectrum. So at the top end of the spectrum, we've got things like voodoo death. At the bottom end of the spectrum, we've got the you-look-a-bit-peaky effect. Now, this is... I'm, I'm quite a pasty person. I'm quite pale. But most of the time, I'm very chipper and I feel fine. But I have the odd day when I go out when my mum, who I trust and respect, will say to me, you look a bit peaky, and to that point, I will have been fine. But the minute she says it, I go, do you know what? I, d I don't feel too good now. I'm I might have to sit down in a dark room and eat a biscuit. That's a fairly mild nocebo, but it's nocebo, okay? Here's another one. 60% of people taking chemotherapy experience nausea before their treatment. Now, this is where it starts to get very serious. There is no medical reason for them to feel sick before their chemotherapy, but most people do, days before or even hours before. If you, are, if you think you'll get sick, you're might more likely to get sick. That's a very general term, okay? There, there are people actively researching this, and we haven't done this for all illnesses, but there have been a number of studies that show this is a case. There was a study of women who thought they were more likely to die from heart disease, and they found they were four times more likely for exactly that to happen. And I've interviewed a lot of surgeons, and surgeons will tell you off the record... Is that my one-minute cough? No. <laughs> surgeons will tell you off the record they don't like operating on people who think they're going to die because they're more likely to die. In clinical trials, a quarter of patients get side effects. Don't know what the four's doing at the end of there, but anyway. Let me unpack that for you a bit. So when you're testing a new drug, you do something called a clinical trial, and you get loads and loads of people in. So if you're all in this clinical trial, right, half of you will take the drug, and the other half of you will take a dummy pill. So you can compare the effect between the two. You're the placebo group, okay? Now, what's important... And you don't know which you're taking. That's the really important thing. You don't know if you're taking the drug or the control, and nor do you. 
But the important thing is that you're all treated the same. So, if there are possible side effects, you're all warned about the side effects. Now, here's the thing. 20% of you get the side effects. You haven't taken the drug. You haven't put in any medicine inside your body. But 20% of you will develop the side effects. Sometimes these side effects can be so severe, they cause you to drop out of the clinical trial. So the nocebo effect, apart from being very personally distressing, is costing the drug industry an absolute fortune. And finally, because of the nocebo effect, you can overdose on nothing. And that might sound a bit weird. Let me explain that to you. I came across a story of a young man who'd been desperately depressed, and he enrolled in a clinical trial for antidepressants. And because it was a clinical trial, he didn't know if he was getting the drug, and he didn't know if he was getting the control. He had no idea. But he had a particularly bad day, and he had a fight with his girlfriend, and he took all of the pills. And he instantly regretted it because he felt desperately ill, and he took himself to A&E. And in A&E, his vitals started to go off the wall, and his blood pressure started to go all over the place. And they desperately tried to get in touch with the doctor who was running the clinical trial. And after four hours, because doctors are difficult to pin down, they got him. And the doctor said, he looked him up in the charts, and he said, do you know what? This guy's not taking the drug. This guy was in the control group. This guy has overdosed on sugar pills. And the minute they told him, he felt better. So fairly serious stuff. Now, if I haven't scared you enough, I'd like to make the point. <laughs> it can be catching. So I should have done this round about Halloween, shouldn't I, really, this whole thing. It can be catching. There are a lot of instances where somebody has experienced a symptom and other people have caught it. There's a very high profile one that's just coming to an end in America where in 2011, uh, a teenage girl at a high school in New York developed these facial tics and these motor, jerky motor movements. And it really, nah, 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 she was speaking like that. Really profound tics. And they couldn't find a cause for this. And it was deeply distressing for her and for her family. Um, over the next two years, another dozen people at school developed the same symptoms. Now, the Department of Health in New York didn't help things because they covered up. Well, they didn't cover up. They just weren't quick to tell the public what they thought had happened, which was that this was basically psychosomatic, a nocebo that had been spread. They call it mass psychogenic illness. In the meantime, Erin Brockovich, the environmental campaigner, waded in and found some evidence that there'd been like a toxic dump or something near the school which was then discredited. And in the meantime, the girls had all this media exposure, and that kind of seemed to fuel it. Now, basically, since this has fallen out of the media spotlight, the girls are getting better. But an interesting thing I'd like you to think about is that if nocebo is catching, I think that social media, be it blogging or Twitter or Facebook, is beginning to make these things easier to spread. So, I'm going to leave you on that thought, but one last thing to say. I don't know if you are feeling queasy. Anyone feeling queasy? So, basically, I did want to reassure you, my talk does cause nausea, but you are my control group. <laughs> so, you're completely fine. Uh, there's an identical room next door. That's my experimental group, and I just checked on them, and they're all being sick into buckets. So, but I did want you to know that you are fine. I do have a white coat somewhere. I've probably got a stethoscope hanging around, so you'll be fine. Trust me, I am a doctor. Thank you very much. <laughs>